I don't want you to watch this episode, what you're about to see, and think that I'm trying to put you through a guilt trip. It's one of the goals, of course, is to convince you to make a donation. And I don't want to leave that till the very end because the world's not in a good place right now. And maybe you're one of the millions of people who's out of a job right now. And you can't afford even a dollar. I get it. So the real point of this episode, I want to tell you right up front, is to get you to think of, to at least think about how much you appreciate the clergy in your life. Let me begin with some deep orthodox theology. Father John Moses. Try to stay awake. Welcome back to another episode of The Faces of Rokor. If you are still not convinced that this is one of the strangest shows on the internet right now, put a seatbelt on. What in the world is this? Father John is a convert to orthodoxy. He used to be a Methodist minister. And he was the rector of All Saints of North America Parish in Middlebrook, Virginia. I have to come clean, though. One of the things that I judged Father John for, for many years, he had this thing, right, where he was obsessed with missionary work. Now, I think we call it incarnational. It's being among the people and being one with the people and knowing the people and then sharing the, the Holy Orthodox faith is really, uh, I think, the way it works the best. Yeah, we did some hard work this week. But that's usually not the most important thing. The most important thing is this interaction, culture to culture, brother to brother, sister to sister. People who come on these mission trips end up being evangelized. We might come thinking, oh, we're going to help the mission, and we do. But there's something about the warmth and the faith and the commitment of the people that we come to serve. It evangelizes us. And we go back with our hearts lifted up, you know, and just feeling, feeling renewed in our faith again. I hate to admit this, but for me, it was this, uh, well, he, he's a, these former Protestants, Methodists, you know, they can't help themselves. You know, they just, they, he wants to be out in the street and, you know, yelling and screaming and Bible thumping. Uh, we don't have to shout. We don't have to, you know, hand out tracts or whatever ways that Protestants might try to get converts. You need someone who knows the people, who knows how to talk to them, how to reach them, um, people are sort of burned out with Protestant evangelism, knocking on doors, handing out tracts, you know, hellfire and damnation preaching and all this stuff. They're kind of, they kind of had it. Father John was always involved in countless new endeavors. He started the VIM program in the Eastern American Diocese, Volunteers in Mission. Um, he helped start the Pastoral Resources Program. He's tried to start a diocesan library. He tried to help clergy with uh, counseling. He, every, it seemed like every single year there was some sort of new endeavor, project, or something that Father John was trying to start. And all of them had one thing in common. He really wanted to help people, specifically the clergy. And I would constantly criticize Father John behind his back and say, oh, here we go, another Father John project. Let's see how long before this fizzles out and... Uh, I hope that we've helped to plant the seed. I, I hope that this, is, as Father said, is truly the beginning. I think he felt that. I know he felt that. And I'm so ashamed of that because... So many people need, need the Holy Orthodox faith. What was I doing to spread the faith? You know, Rokor has this gift to give. Uh, not that we don't think people who don't do it our way aren't orthodox. No, we don't think that at all. But we want to show them the glory of holding to the tradition, of, of doing these things. It's still very alive. It's not old. It's not, you know, it's just alive, but it's still the holy tradition. What sort of missionary work was I involved in? But Father John never gave up. Uh, it was just remarkable. And um, it just made me feel I was in the presence of the apostles. 
going out into the lands, preaching the gospel, the good news to every, every nation. I, I was really moved. And then it was my wedding day. And after everything was over, get that big Father John hug. And I said such a stupid thing that, I don't know, maybe you say this too. We should get together. We will absolutely plan a visit. I cannot wait to come down. We just need to settle, settle in and get through the next few weeks, but we will absolutely get together. We settled in. Weeks went by, months went by. And uh, Father John sends me a message and says, Hey, brother, how's it going? Hope, uh, hope everything's well. Um, let me know if you guys are still able to come down. We'd love to have you. Um, take care. And uh, I responded. Well, Father, you see uh, this and that and uh, work and uh, th it, we really didn't settle in as fast as we thought. And uh, uh, but we, we definitely will get together. It's on my list. We're coming, you know, one of those uh, we should absolutely get together for lunch. Right. Whenever someone says that. No one's getting together for lunch. Let's be honest. And so I did that to Father John. For four years. He eventually stopped trying. And then on Facebook, I remember it clear as day, I start, he started posting these statuses about his health. And that's the other thing with Father John is, he looked perfectly healthy for as long as I knew him. And yet, you would always hear that he was sick. And then Father John just fell off the grid. Stop showing up to conferences, events. And I sort of forgot about him. The only time I would think about Father John is when he would post some of his, uh, well, Father John posts on Facebook. If you're friends with him, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He had a great sense of humor. And anytime I would see some of these funny posts, I would say, well, hey, look at that, Father John, he's in good spirits. Everything's fine. He'll be okay. But then one day, he posted something. I knew that things were getting bad for him. Something changed. And I knew from that message that this man was broken. And I never responded. A few weeks later, my wife sees another status in Father John. Things aren't getting any, any better. And so she gets this idea that let's go down and surprise Father John. Yeah, I, th I thought this was fantastic. We're going to go down there and uh, I'm going to make everything right. I'm going to make it all up to Father John because we're going to show up and he's going to open that door and he's going to be so happy to see us. And, you know, it'll be, it'll be like old times again. And uh, then he'll tell us that, you know, everything will be okay and he's going to be able to beat the cancer and uh, the diabetes really really isn't so bad and uh, we'll serve, we'll laugh, we'll, you know, it'll be like old times. And so we get there. And when that door opened, I knew in that second how bad this really was. Everyone knew it. My in-laws went with me, my wife. We looked at Father John. We all knew he was dying. That feeling, I can't describe that feeling to you. Like you're optimistic that everything's going to be okay. And that he's going to make it, right? And this is not the end, but yet you know His face was swollen. His feet were swollen. I would never post a picture or video of a priest in shorts, but he couldn't put pants on. That's how swollen he was from the diabetes. And you, 
you try to remain optimistic, right? The last thing you want to do is walk in there and, and look like this. But no matter how hard we tried, Father John wasn't, wasn't stupid. He was one of those priests that could read people better than anyone I've ever met. And so we're looking at him and he's looking at us. And he sees that, that <laughs> he sees that we came, he sees that we came to lift his spirits. But at that moment, we were pretty, pretty darn down in the dumps and, and we needed someone to lift our spirits. And so he pulled out his guitar and what you're about to see is so much more than just the song. This clip right here, first off, look at Father John. You can see the pain in his eyes, but look how hard he's trying to hide it. In fact, there's, a, there's a one moment where he, he kind of like looks directly into the camera. It's my favorite moment. But this is so much more than a song. This is so much more than just Father John being hospitable to welcome guests. No, 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 no. What you're about to see, this is what living the liturgy after the liturgy looks like. Again. I'm not prepared for this episode. I can't explain that to you just yet, what I mean by that. In the next few episodes, because believe me, we will be talking a lot about Father John right now. We will get into it. We will explain it. But just try and soak this scene in right now, because this is what it looks like, living the liturgy after the liturgy. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is older, older than the sea, younger than the mountain, blowing like a breeze, country road. I don't want you to watch this episode, including that song, and just get emotional, right? And say, well, what a tender moment and awe. Because then, well, you're missing the point of why that's such a powerful moment right there. <laughs> You see, Father John didn't need to talk about God all the time. He just tried to look at you and see God. You would just feel this purest form of love. That's why we're talking about this on Father's Day. You know, in the, the parable, in the gospel about the prodigal son, you see the son running back to the father. That was like that moment for me, standing outside of his house. And when I hear that gospel reading, and they talk about how the father embraced his son, in my mind, I feel a Father John hug. 
That's how powerful it was. Not because he was such a good hugger, a cuddler. No. This man was broken. He was sexually abused when he was only eight years old. This man had demons in his closet that you and I can't even imagine. This man had such a difficult life. And yet, you and I, who knew him, probably never even knew half of it. Not even 10% of what he was going through. Only now am I finding out all of these things. And I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of myself for not showing that man a little more love and appreciation for everything that he did for me. But God is so merciful and he gave me that one last opportunity to, with my family to go see him. To tell him to his face, Father, how much I appreciate you. And I waited four years I delayed. And that's the point. Everyone says it. Oh, you never know if you'll make it till tomorrow. Today could be your last day. You, you, you hear that, you don't process it. But if I delayed, I would have never had that chance. Father John died five days after that trip. Five days. So it's Father's Day. I'm just going to end this, this ramble, this rant, because I just want you to understand just don't I can't even ask you to understand I'm just gonna ask you to think about this this weekend forget about the donation forget about doing anything for your priest just think about a moment in your life when a priest saved you so who am I who am I to talk about the clergy about why you should support them. I'm just a guy who made a lot of mistakes in his life. And I've been fortunate and blessed to have so many priests there every step of the way. Because there's so many times where I didn't know which way to turn, left, right, backwards, forwards. And every step of the way there was a priest that said, hey, up. Look up. You can go up. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers, to all the spiritual fathers, both living and reposed. And thank you so much for watching this show. If you can, please go to our website and make a donation. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, thanks for bearing with me. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is older, older than. Younger than the mountain, blowing like a breeze, country roads.